the worst Tinder date you've ever been on? Okay, so one time this guy told me to come to Queens at 1 a.m. I'm really, really into Asian women despite what I'm marrying. Hope yeah. y'all have a great wedding. And they were planning to f two days after my birthday. I mean, this guy was so cute. I was honestly willing to do anything at this point. I was honestly, honestly willing to do anything at this point. Just the betrayal and like, how could this person that I cared about so much do that to me? String me along for five months as the other woman and still have a live-in girlfriend of three years. They now have a baby together. Came to my house, would put her on do not disturb, go to her house, put me on do not disturb. It was a whole mess two weeks later he's literally engaged to somebody else and i'm like what the heck this is my dating life i'm not a piece of meat and they're not going to reciprocate your feelings they're only about themselves and they could care less about you why wasn't i good enough to date you know i was good enough to sleep with i was good enough to hang out with you are good enough to hook up with but not good enough to date i got played good enough to hook up with but not good enough to date that is really the essence of today's dating market which is leading to an ever-increasing number of women who find out the hard way that just because a chad or tyrone is interested in you by liking your photos swiping on you and asking you to come over does not mean he's actually interested in you <sighs> that i'm done i'm done with situationships with guys who are just use me because you know they want to sleep with me or they just you know want to hook up with me or like or something like that i'm just very very done i'm done i'm exhausted guys yep she's done and probably was already done for several years today she's more like overcooked or burned since she's obviously been played over and over again to the point of complete mental destruction and now sees no path to happiness Dang. and when you look on social media especially the mental wasteland that is tiktok you'll find millions of women who've reached the exact same point complaining about how they are the victims of f-boys manipulation gaslighting etc it hurts when men use manipulation to try to get you to trust them I just wonder, and I really do, I, I guess I already know the reason. You talk about men thinking with the other head, but apparently if you're engaging in a hookup culture, you're doing the same thing. So how are you any different from a man? The hypocrisy. Modern women reek of hypocrisy. And then when you say, wait a minute, but you guys are allowing these men to do, yeah, but they shouldn't. Yeah. Okay. Let's. They shouldn't be doing it. Let's hold them accountable. But what about you as well? Why are you continuing to allow these men literally inside your body? Multiple men. We're not talking about a high school boyfriend like your first love. And then maybe like another one or two or three people that, oh, I had another boyfriend for a year. And then, man, I broke up out of that relationship. And I just, I don't know. I just. It was a mistake. We're not talking about that type of behavior. We're talking about just flat out undisciplined behavior by modern women. I think I heard somebody on one video say she had over a hundred bodies, a <laughs> hundred bodies. That that's that that you don't have that many boyfriends, and that's not that's not a mistake. That's a pattern of behavior. And then you're going to ask a man to pay for that. <laughs> you're going to ask a man to invest how can he lord help anyway uh, anyway to let your guard down to get what they want from you but in reality they are actually all victims of stupidity which i'll prove to you through several examples of classic chadness starting with this girl i open the door his apartment's a disaster he's ginormous too he's like seven feet tall he takes me to his room right away he's right ready. away so check it out she actually went to a stranger's house at one o'clock in the morning who then took her to his room and fed her a whole bottle of the cheapest wine he could find he gives me a double <laughs> bottle of red wine you can use a smoke thing wine wine is very popular wine is the best man. yeah <gasps> One of the barefoot things. Now, does this sound like Prince Charming to you or someone using clever manipulation tactics? These people are masters at 
lying, switching it around, minimizing it. You've got to let go of the idea that you were stupid for falling for them. No, you are stupid for falling for them. Since these tactics are ridiculously easy to observe and chads do not even try to hide their intentions. There's no dates, no dinner, no manipulation or special tactics being used. It's just simply come to my house ASAP. It depends, you know, like sometimes they want to go out and have like dinner. Maybe I don't want to go to dinner, you know, because I see her a different way. And so if they're really attractive, I'll go out to a drink. To a bar or something, you know. Same. But like... But if they're not? Yeah, one point lower, like, they're coming over, you know what I mean? <laughs> see, that is how chats actually operate. None of this manipulation or love bombing nonsense that you keep hearing about on social media, which is just a coping mechanism for women to hide behind for when they think with their and they get used by a chad who sees no value in them at all. You know somebody there? I see a girl I hooked up with multiple times last really? year. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I never see her. You never saw her? No. She's good, man. You'll like her. <laughs> and so when chad says, come over to my place at 1 a.m., they don't hesitate at all and run to his call like a true simp. What's the furthest you'll drive for a guy? It's like 400 miles. 400 miles? Yeah. yeah. This guy told me to come to Queens at 1 a.m. Please drop a like on the video if you think that these girls getting played by chads is 100% their own fault and comment down below what you think. Now after a couple times of bedroom fun. Hey, do you wash your covers when you're got, when your guy done having Yeah. Right after, really? No, a week after. Ooh, cochina. There's a I'm on there. Oh, you could. Oh, Amy. The chat will stop texting since he was never interested in the girl to begin with. But too lazy. Sometimes too lazy. Sometimes, like I say, I was and then just wife. So yeah. And so the classic ghosting happens, causing these women to run the TikTok to claim that they are now the victim of a narcissistic, emotionally ex. My ex-boyfriend was a raging narcissist, and I'm going to tell you some stories. Missing your narcissistic ex or wanting to go back to him? When you forgive a narcissist in a relationship, right? They're going to disrespect you. They're going to lie to you. They're going to manipulate you. They're going to cheat you. There's a reason why your narcissistic ex claims that you're the one who's a narcissist. Listen to me. If you're healing from narcissistic, you need to hear this. This is what you call zero accountability. At this point, I, I'm convinced that they don't care. I just heard that woman in the last clip say, there's no fluids on the bed. It's all inside me. Like, who says that on camera? These women have no shame. How are you going to get a man with no shame? What confidence can a man put in you to say, okay, she's actually for me? She's actually going to be loyal to me. She's actually going to keep my secret safe. Just because you have a camera in front of your face doesn't mean that you have to say everything. If you want to speak about your dating experience, fine, do that. But don't you think that there's... These women have no decorum. They have no humility. They just run around living their lives freely, drinking, partying, giving themselves away and taking multiple people sometimes and then bragging about it as if it's a notch on their wall. It's like they're, a, a, a <laughs> what do you call those people? Taxidermy, taxidermist. I, I, I'm not sure exactly what you call, where they hang uh, their game up on the wall. Like when they uh, go out hunting and they get something like a buck, I think, I heard 12 point, I don't hunt, so 12 point buck, 14 point, I don't know. But you have the Bears and like these really exquisite, and the NFL players, the celebrities, they're the big game. They're like the lion where you had to travel over to Africa and the Sahara or the Safari or whatever, and you took that home and this is something I got framed and it cost me thousands of dollars. I don't know the prices. I'm just equating it to that with the way they speak about their exploits, their escapades, if I could use that. I'm not even sure I'm using a word right. They speak about their adventures. And then who are you going to say this to? Who You're not going to say this to your man because he's not going to hear it. And then you're saying it on camera for millions of people. And so he can see it and make a decision. Nope. These, these employers, 
These employers are checking out your social media and they're like, you're polished, you're nice, you're clean, you're pristine coming up to this interview. But I looked on your Facebook and you were talking about some racist stuff. You were talking about stuff that we can't have in our company. We don't want people like that in our company. And your application is fantastic. You got years of experience and you don't know why you were disqualified. And then you cry racism or or discrimination or whatever it might be, which sometimes it is the case that that happens. I'm just saying you cry all these things, but you need to have a look at your Facebook. You need to have a look at your your social media and even sometimes your dating profiles. You need to take a look at that and see well, what is it that I'm doing to cut people off. This is the same thing with modern women. They do all these interviews and things that they that nature on social media, but they come to the they come to the uh, the, the date looking good and everything and they talk and they know how to present themselves. But then all the man has to do, and sometimes it has happened to where after the date he's come across her social media because it's gone viral talking about him. And it's like, nope. And he goes to me and I don't I, I don't know why. Could have something to do that you're talking about him on social media. Maybe that's it. <laughs> I'm convinced, man. Billy. Since these women take absolutely no accountability at all for handpicking guys to tell them from the start, come over and let me use you. You really like this, hmm. So that, yeah, that's yeah, how you yeah, go. Yeah. You open up with, hmm. <laughs> so, but, don't be paid. <laughs> Welcome to dating in the 21st century. Anyways, moving on because it's about to get a lot worse in these next examples that really demonstrate why these women keep getting played over and over and over again by classic Chads and Tyrones causing all hope to disappear. It's already too late. You already love him. That already means that you're gonna get hurt. It's too late. They just spiraled me into like a rabbit hole and it takes me to like a dark place. And it's gonna drop you into this rabbit hole of never finding peace. Ah, all these hopeless romantics who just want a nice guy to love them and be loyal. But somehow these mean evil chats keep popping up in their dating apps and forcing them to swipe on them. There's clearly nothing these helpless women can do, right? Now the reality is of course that the average guy cannot pull this off at all. This special power is reserved for chats and Tyrones only. I think we have gathered 80 matches <laughs> and these guys are not using clever tricks chats will simply say what they want and what they're thinking since they really don't give a because they've actual thing to do we haven't even ordered our coffee yet this guy goes you're chubbier in person and goes like this at my belly yep classic chat you see a guy that's serious about dating a girl would never have said that but Chad definitely will, since he's already got three better options lined up right now. So why would he bother with small talk or trying to please her? Dating apps only to redownload them as really is, but it's not so bad because then I get to meet people like you. <laughs> Wanna come up? <laughs> and this is where all of these bad relationships, hookups, situationships, whatever you want to call them, start out with since these women are handpicking these guys to then complain that all men are like this. It's women want to be able to have casual without being traumatized every time. There is such thing as like treating somebody like a woman and having a basic amount of respect with some type of empathy and compassion for them and curiosity doesn't mean that you want to uh, marry them, you know? And I feel like this is lost. This is lost to so many the guys. <laughs> oh, hey, again. Oh, hey. Wait. We, we've talked before? I don't remember speaking to this particular woman. When in reality, it's just a very small group of men who have the luxury and spend zero effort on getting laid, since 80% of women are all fighting over the exact same small group of guys. I constantly just feel my phone vibrating, the messages that are coming in. Getting a ton of messages. Now this all applies to situations where the chat actually shows up, but since chat is so busy with all of his hookups, he sometimes simply forgets to cancel and double books them. And then he's like, okay, we'll just see you know, some like people's girlfriends are coming over. And I was like, cool. Not expecting it to be his girlfriend or a date he invited. I just drove like an hour out of my way to come hang out with this guy at his house. Um, and I noticed that my message wasn't delivering. I tried to give him a call and his phone goes straight to voicemail. So I'm like, okay. 
So I walk up to the door, I ring the doorbell, bunch of dogs barking, nobody answers. Oh, no worries, darling. Just wait 40 minutes for Chad to finish, and then he's all yours. Yep, being a Chad is hard, man. You basically need an assistant to schedule all of your hookups and then maintain texting contact. However, you'll probably end up banging her and ghosting her too, so that's probably not gonna work out. But hey, it can actually get worse because Chad can also simply refuse to sleep with you to your face after meeting you for just two seconds to then decide to leave since he doesn't want to waste his time. Tinder date, right? We meet outside, meet together. He looks at me up and down and goes, this isn't gonna work. So we get there and we meet in the parking lot. So he got a full view of me. He gets up, goes to the bathroom, <laughs> comes back, throws down a $10 bill and walks out. <laughs> yep, another classic Chad with more options than a freaking NBA player. You know, I, uh, you know, these, I wish these modern women would get comfortable with test. And I'm not talking about the test where they look on social media and, and, and people are doing stupid stuff and they're saying stupid stuff. Oh, test him. And if he fails this, then he's not the one for you. No, it. it you're going to run across. How can I say this? You can look online in the NFL, in the NBA. You can look online. There's channels that break down what teams are doing very well. Steph Curry is doing this. And when he gets in this position, he does this. James Harden pushing to the left or whatever it is. You can see it on film, what they're doing. And you can see and study the nature of men on film just as and in real life, just as men can do with women. So if a man has to study you, then what the heck are you doing not studying him? This guy exhibits these behaviors in these scenarios. I don't want this man. This man is what these guys are calling a Chad. He's a Tyrone. He's a Pookie. He's a Ray Ray. He's really going to put a baby in me and then leave. I don't want that for my life. Even if I want to be a boss babe, I'm not looking for that type of time. I don't want that. But instead, they have things like the, the orange peel challenge or the, the ketchup whatever challenge or the the plum or the sh the sugar grapes or whatever challenge they got going on at the time to disqual oh if he ain't doing that for you then it, it, he don't really love you shut your stupid behind up dodging those six and sevens like a pro now what's actually happening here is that these women are actively picking men that are so far out of their league that they themselves can't even believe that these guys are for real. All right, so first things first, we're gonna start off with Tinder. These girls love this picture. And I think the reason is, is because I'm cooking. I've never, I don't think I ever cooked for any one of these girls. The amount of times that girls comment on how good my pictures are in regards to the quality and all that stuff, it's just insane. You see, this is exactly the state of dating today, where average chicks are only picking the very best of guys they can find on these apps after which they get super excited when they actually match and start imagining themselves having little Chad babies. However, Chad and Tyrone are in a completely different state of mind and they are just swiping on everything like there's no tomorrow. This is the trick on Tinder. You swipe on everything. I could it's the really neat. See, they don't even care who they actually swipe on. They'll sort that out later when they start sending those clever manipulative text messages like, hey, come over and bring food. Is the bar that low that you want me to drive to you and buy you food? <laughs> oh boy, this one gets me every time, man. Now don't get me wrong. If a girl's actually hot, as in an 8, 9, or 10, then yes, Chad's will put in a bit of extra effort, maybe even go as far as to go on an actual date. However, if the girl is just average, a true Chad will not waste his time on her at all, since they have hundreds of girls waiting to do whatever they ask. I was honestly willing to do anything at this point. And this is exactly the type of behavior that leads to millions of women being in situationships, thinking that they are in real relationships, and to most men not even getting dates, which then gets documented in articles like these. And this is where stupidity really takes off. We're going to talk about this article that just came out in Psychology Today. The Rise of Lonely Single Men. 
Well, if it isn't the consequences of your actions coming back to bite ya. We are going to stay single and happy, whereas y'all are gonna stay single and frustrated. So it's your choice. Mark my words, this era that we're living through right now is the return of the matriarchy. Men need to address skills deficits to meet healthier relationship expectations. Yep, these women are laughing, thinking that they are actually accomplishing something when they hear that most women are in relationships and that most men are single and lonely, often accompanied with the phrase, women are raising their standards. Now that women are self-sufficient, they're expecting more from their men. Every single one of you, myself included, needs to raise your standard. There's a rise in lonely single men. Timed, we're tired. We are sick and tired. And now, now, some of y'all, <laughs> y'all can say, well, I'm raising my standard. But some of y'all know y'all need to quit. Y'all know, y'all know y'all need to quit. Listen. <laughs> All right. Y'all know y'all need Honestly, to quit. Honestly, this points a question of when is it the men's time to step up? However, this just shows their complete ignorance when it comes to basic math. Since unless these women are all lesbians, I don't see how you are pairing the majority of women with an actual guy, while at the same time most men are single. The only way this works is if you are pairing these women with the exact same guy and that is exactly what's going on. He finally let me in his phone and I'm seeing all these texts come through from random numbers like Mercedes, Benz, dealerships and stuff, but they were flirty messages from girls because I could see the preview. I clicked open the conversation there was like pictures of girls in their conversation. I was just in shock. So he was like, I don't even know a Cynthia. I'm like, are you sure about that? He was like, nope, don't know a Cynthia. Okay, if you don't know a Cynthia, who the is this? Asking to give him a ride at the airport. I found out he was flying to Ohio to meet another girl. She was Dang. like, he's been at my house like every other night. So after he saw me, he would go see her. They were on a date in that Insta picture. That day, he also told her he broke up with me, which wasn't true. I could honestly do hours of these montages with women complaining that the guy they are dating is seeing two, three, or 15 other women as well, showing the irony of women claiming that they are raising their standards. And, and they're not. They're not. They're raising their standards to try to make it seem like I'm going to get a Chad. I'm going to get a Tyrone. I'm going to get a Pookie. I'm going to get a Ray Ray. I got an NFL player's attention before. I can do it again. No, you're not. There's only so many NFL players and somebody is not going. That's a statistical fact. That's a literally observable fact. But guess what? There's plenty of great men, which is what a lot of men say. There's plenty of great men out here, not the bums. Not the dudes that want to put a baby inside you. Plenty of men that are willing to work with you and for you and for his family to get whatever it is that you want and whatever it is that you need. But because they're not six foot in a lot of different instances or they don't have a nice car or maybe they're not making 70, 80, 90 thousand dollars, then you think that they're cheap, they're broke and they're still in the oven. That's why the, that's why sometimes these women put men in the friend zone because they see what they like. And I'm willing to go on a date with you just to see what where you're at. If you're close enough, then you've got potential. That's what they say. If you're close enough to kind of close to where I want you to be, then you got potential. I keep you around, but you're not quite there. I'm going to check on you in about a year. And if you're there in a year, then we can talk. You're sitting at 50,000 right now. I want you to be closer to 75,000 to where I know that I'll be able to just quit my job on a whim. You know, it'd be kind of tight for us, but that's what I'm going to come back to you and say, hey, you need to work a little bit harder. If you have to put in more hours, but you want to take care of your family, right? Not really willing to help this man out and really burn him out. And then afterwards, you just leave them for somebody that I just need my needs taken care of or I built a business and I outgrew you. You know, the usual stupid stuff. Anyway, that's just my opinion. Until the next video, I'm out.